My, my name is Rich, uh, Rich Groves, and I am here with Arvind uh, to talk about A10's one DDoS uh, solution. So, in particular, uh, how you know we, we're always sort of looking to figure out how we can protect uh, services much faster uh, and more accurately. Uh, than than we used to and our competition um, so you know I, I I have to I'm gonna digress a little bit because uh, some people that I meet ask me uh, how I got to a10 just very briefly and it's a funny story that's why I thought I would I would say so <clears throat> so I used to work at Microsoft uh, and uh, and one uh, one thing that I was doing there was I was working with the Digital Crimes Unit uh, where we would take botnets from bad guys uh, and it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. But a long time ago when we were putting this together, uh, we couldn't figure, we didn't know, you know, we had this multi-million uh, node botnet that was, uh, you know, that we were going to take you know, from bad guys and we didn't know how much traffic it was actually going to create. Uh, and so one day I had this, I had this uh, demo, you know, gear that A10 let me have so that I could, uh, I could take a look, have, right? Um, so that I could take a look at what they were offering. And I took this piece of, of A10 gear and in the middle of the night shoved it in the network somewhere to actually terminate this traffic. Um, so I like to, I like to tell without paying for it at the time. <laughs> So, um, so I like to tell people that I'm I'm working off uh, this payment like washing dishes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but on the flip side of that, you know, I I really believe in what we do. I believe in the platform, uh, and so you know, from 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 all of the work that I've done, I think this is really the right platform uh, to take care of the job. So. So I, I wanted to let you guys know, if you didn't already know, uh, that DDoS is still a problem, right? Um, it, from the last time I presented, I think it was four years ago, we just came out with our threat protection system platform. Uh, and, and, uh, and it was a big problem back then, but I think we were seeing like 300 uh, gigabits per second of, uh, of DDoS. It was the largest one, I think Cloudflare talked about it uh, back then. But of course, we just recently had this GitHub memcached D reflection attack, uh, way bigger, um, you know, multi terabits per second uh, to to absorb. So this is this is a real problem that lots of service providers, lots of uh, uh, gaming providers, etc., have on a daily basis. Uh, what has changed, however, is it's become multi-vector um, in nature. That's kind of a, a buzzword uh, that, or a buzz term that people use, but, but realistically, people are sending these very high volume attacks, and they're also sending low and slow attacks. What I mean by that is opening up lots of connections to servers um, and, uh, and exhausting their uh, uh, ability to, you know, uh, take any more traffic without exhausting their their bandwidth. So it's a little sneaky. Um, definitely increased frequency, like we just talked about. Attacks are cheap uh, and they're really easy to pay for. Um, $150 um, is what Trend Micro says um, I can buy and and have purchased um, uh, time on a booter. Uh, that is much, much cheaper than $150. Uh, $15 a month is what I was uh, looking at at one point. Uh, and, and that's maybe 80 gigabits of traffic for the booter that we were, that we were looking at. So this is, this is a real issue. Uh, now, uh, the IoT threat. While it's interesting that 20 billion connected devices by 2020, it's a little, you know, it's hard to really wrap your head around. Um, my, my favorite thing to talk about with IoT is that the bad guys are always trying to take them back. Uh, even with Mirai where they, where they took a whole bunch of K9 
cameras, etc. Uh, if you if you watch these cameras, I have a threat intelligence team that's 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 watching this this information. You can see on a daily basis, God, even an hourly basis, uh, bad guys are trying to take you know this uh, these weapons from each other, uh, uploading um, uploading. Uh, you know, firmware to each one of these devices. So it's very interesting uh, and really dangerous. So what's different about today for us is I wanted to talk to you about this need for distributed detection. Classically, all of us, including A10, have been relying on flow exports and packet sampling for, for doing uh, detection. All of our competitors do this. Um, it's just sort of table stakes for everyone, right? The problem is they're just inherently limiting. Um, I think all of us here uh, know that, um, and I have a long history in visibility, not just from this flow export uh, piece, but from uh, from Microsoft's daemon system and coming up with Big Tap, um, that I guess you guys guys probably went to Big Switch already this this week. So so this has been a passion of mine. Um, but when using flow exports here, we have issues with sampling. You know, uh, devices are really uh, heavily taxed. Network devices get really heavily taxed. Uh, with this sort of thing. And then you have to figure out duplication in, in the network of flows, sampling in different places, um, and different interfaces uh, give you different results. And so you have to figure that out. And weirdly enough, clock skew is actually a big problem, right, um, across the network. So lately, and I draw this from the ADC and the firewall, but it's also ADC firewall and the network devices uh, where we're, we're getting streaming stats via protobuf and other means um, that, and Raj talked about Kafka, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, uh, and that has helped matters some, but it makes in the centralized detection model, it makes matters harder. Uh, to get all of these different types of inputs. And then you have to know who to trust, et cetera, right? Can I challenge that gently? I've spoken to people doing flow e DDoS detection using flow exports. These are largely analytics companies who've got, and you're sort of saying here that flow exports and packet sampling, but are not necessarily the right tool for distributed DDoS detection? Um, yeah. And I have uh, at least the A10 view, at least in this demonstration. Okay. Right. Sorry, I jumped up. No, it's all good. <laughs> um, so, so, and feel free to ask um, questions uh, for sure. So I, I, I'm going to say here that at least what we're demonstrating, uh, and it's, it's purely up to the user, you know, to, 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 to figure out whether this is interesting for them or not. Uh, but we look at this as distributing this detection workload to the devices that see the traffic all the time uh, and in, in depth, right? Not, not just sampling, not just relying on these inherently, I'm not going to say broken, but inherently uh, limiting protocols, right? Um, so distributing this detection workload is actually pretty, uh, is actually pretty important. What we end up getting to uh, is it reduces this mean time to mitigation quite a bit. Uh, and, and it gives us the ability to go in and say, uh, instead, of, instead of waiting for like, let's say a flow record, right? The flow record may not actually have, depending on which version you're using, it may not actually have uh, the, the, the get request, the actual request itself. Maybe you're under a get flood, right? Uh, but the ADC will. If, if the ADC is in path for that service. So um, I've got a question, I'm just curious, how are you, when you, you say you're pushing this out to the service edge, how are you exact, so exactly capturing that? Is that a box that's in line, or what's the, well, how does that work exactly? Yeah, sure, no, um, so, so with, with this model, uh, we actually have our ACOS platform 
um, in this model that we're going to demonstrate. So our okay. ACOS platform is the operating system that we use um, on our devices. So when I say ADC and firewall, um, really at the moment I'm talking about the, uh, the Thunder ADC, Thunder CFW that we talked about earlier. Um, what, uh, what we have is a lot of compute and we have a lot of uh, memory on each one of these boxes. And so um, we, we process packets very quickly, uh, but the beautiful thing is we process them quickly and we actually have some resources to do extra stuff with the, with the information, right? Uh, and uh, that's just inherent to the platform. Okay. So what's the detection uh, mechanism here? It, it's a third he, party tool? No, no, uh, the detection mechanism when we push it to the edge uh, is is A10, you know, proprietary stuff. And we're actually looking at our uh, information like our, our connection tables, the, uh, we're looking at um, our, the term eludes me at the moment. <laughs> um, we're looking at our baselines All right. uh, that we're that we're uh, that we're building for each one of the services. We're doing service discovery on each one of the boxes, you know. So it, it affords us a lot of uh, automation and uh, speed and creativity. Does it also do anomaly detection um, at the the edge there? Absolutely. And then does it? What hap Is the traffic just blocked, or does it go to a honeypot? What, what happens with the traffic? Bit. Well, in, in this demo, what we'll, sh what we'll show actually, um, and let me, let me go over to, and I'll, and I'll cruise back, but the elements, pardon me, um, the elements in this demo that we're going to show um, include both the A10, the ADC itself, um, and the, T the TPS mitigator, which is the thing that's actually blocking the attack. Uh, and the TPS detector, which is actually receiving, um, no, no, we're not actually using, we are using the detector um, as well, which is actually receiving some of this information um, in a uh, uh, sideband channel. Um, so detection workload is distributed at the edge. We're using this TPS detector for a little bit of something different um, during the demo. So, uh, so you're using oh, a detector mitigative model. Yeah, there's, we're a, there's a range of detectors distributed around the edge of the network. In the event of a, an event, you then forward the data flow to the mitigator. That's, that's right. right. Um, that's, there you go. So what you're actually saying here is we have an application, an ADC or an L7 proxy somewhere in the network, probably lots of them in front of all your internet gateways. It's doing detection. When it sees something, it then talks to the detection management system and then the packets are then transferred to a mitigator Absolutely. Focusing yeah. So that's right. So we steer the traffic toward something that's better suited for mitigation. So the challenge here is why distribute the detection? Why not just have one detector right next to the mitigator? Is there an advantage to distributing the detectors in terms of uh, cost, serviceability? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you have you have a situation. At least my experience yeah. um, has been uh, you have a situation where uh, there's there's a need for multiple tiers of uh, detection workload whenever it's whenever it's centralized you know detection boxes then you have to have a business analytics layer uh, and you need to have this presentation layer and that's uh, that's where some people sort of don't don't really talk about the cost yeah. of doing this implementation oftentimes you pay more for that um, and and we're talking about on prem there are cloud solutions that are a little bit different yeah. Yeah, um, or network-based, not necessarily cloud-based. Talking too much. Yeah, but but then but then they uh, but but then what they what they don't show you is what's happening behind you know the the cloud endpoint. Yeah, yeah, right. Which is pretty much the same thing. That I'm Do you talking. work with any of those network-based uh, mitigation services? So a popular model is to have on-prem detectors. We do. And then in the event that there's a call, you then pass it to some network-based service who can filter you know, terabit class attacks. Absolutely, so uh, we, have a, we have a partnership uh, with VeriSign right. uh, that helps us in this model. So okay. uh, we're, we're constantly, it, Raj talked about this AIOS, uh, AOS platform in the cloud, we're collecting data. 
Right. right. So we're collecting data, but not only are we collecting data, threat intel data, but we're collecting events right. and events from prem. So, as I'm in, so if I'm an enterprise, I have choices. I can put the detectors down, detect the DDoS, then I can either implement my own mitigator if I want to mitigate on-prem, if I think I can do that, or I can choose the architecture to send it to a third-party yeah. service, in this case VeriSign, and they'll do the mitigation upstream in the network backbone. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Makes sense. Great, great question. Quick check on Yeah, okay. The lot, sorry, lot sorry. Let me well. well. <laughs> ask you one more. Um, the detector, as far as I could understand, is a device that is meant to tap into the traffic, right, to do some sort of uh, intelligence or at least um, extract metrics out of the uh, live traffic to yes. be able to detect anomalies or uh, um, security breaches. Have you thought about shipping the detector as an application to run on open hardware? We, we actually do. Um, yeah, so, so I'm, like, that's a ch the challenge with icons, mm -hmm. right, when you're putting together marketing yeah. slides is, <laughs> is, is, is that, is that I, I have a good representation of the hardware that we sell. <laughs> what I don't have is a representation of the uh, virtual model, the KVM, the, you know, VMware, but then also the stuff that Raj bare talked about, stuff. the bare metal, et cetera. Because that, you know, the, that uh, green olive makes me a bit suspicious. <laughs> Classic. I didn't even know. I didn't even see it. Actually. Um, all right. So I'm 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 talking a bit too much, I guess. So uh, we're let's get to our demo. So the demo workflow. Um, we, we have uh, traffic that's sourced, attack traffic and clean traffic. The attack traffic is an anonymized um, attack that we've uh, seen firsthand and had to mitigate firsthand. Uh, so what we end up doing is the ADC actually detects uh, that they're under attack, um, gets the uh, A Galaxy system that has TPS detector um, involved. Um, the management system steers the traffic in the network toward the TPS mitigator. Um, the TPS mitigator uses uh, some, some, some special sauce, uh, that the, some machine learning that we end up doing to extract the best filter to mitigate the attack. Um, and you'll get to see that. Um, and then this learned filter that we come up with is applied when the attack is blocked. Uh, and then we have the DDoS incident report, which ends up getting created. All this stuff is automated, uh, and uh, of course there are uh, controls to make it automated or manual, depending on your you know, stomach for complete automation, right? Uh, so I'm gonna hand it over to Arvin, and he probably has like a minute left. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're fast. <laughs> so, and time's uh, up. Yeah, <laughs> out of luck. The good news is we are playing a video, so I might be able to play in the fast mode. <laughs> One point five x. While you're bringing while you're bringing this up, I'm, I guess I'm still missing the. What's the value of detecting at the application edge rather than further upstream? I mean, like, I guess it just kind of sits kind of like, a, I, and I'm not an expert. This may just be me being naive, but um, I would I would think you'd want to detect as early as possible migrate off as early as possible. So it kind of sits contrary to what I think, you know, my natural inclination would be, which would be to put it upstream and detect up there. What additional information are we actually getting by, so, by detecting further down? So, so um, when we detect higher up, uh, in general, people deploy NetFlow, right? Or, or SFlow. And one of the problems is to make that scale, people end up sampling one in 10,000 packets per second I've seen. Okay. Right. Um, uh, one in ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, I'm sorry. One, one, one in ten thousand. Right. So, uh, so the problem is there. There are these inherent, you know, holes in visibility. Um, you can get a general trend of volume, um, but maybe it's not a volumetric attack that you're trying to mitigate. Right. Um, so the other part of this is uh, uh, detecting early. The, 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 the issue is that, you know, the, the, packet, the packet, the actual round trip time is, is, is so fast anyway um, that detecting higher up in the network or detecting toward the application, the application is the thing that's under attack and it's falling over. I think it's more, it's, it's less about latency, more about capacity. 
Like if you're dealing with the DDoS attack, the, the sooner I can get it off of my primary link, the better. Yeah, I and, I, and I understand that you're signaling upstream, but even detection upstream, like I, I still don't, I, like, to me, it's just where you place the block. I, I so may, may I add to that? I think you really have to have a hybrid. So if I may answer the question is that, um, I mean, not only is there a general trend, right? But see, the, this is, uh, you know, centralized versus distributed, right? So in this case, what's happening is if you really go back to the main theme about intelligent automation, why we are talking about that is that really there are a number of steps. First is, how do you know what is to be protected? Which service needs to be protected? When you're putting a device in the middle, there are thousands and thousands of IP addresses. Now, 999 may not be services that I care, but there may be only one that I care. How does the device upstream know what is the one protected device? But if you do this in the ADC, then I only have one VIP. I know this is the one to be protected. Automatically, so service discovery is easier. And then on the load balancer ADC, I have a lot of additional intelligence. I'm seeing 100% of the traffic. So I get a lot more accurate intelligence. I can do accurate baselining, so which means my profiles, my statistics are all accurate. and Actually, the fastest detection happens on the edge because it's seeing all the traffic. The guy who's getting one in 1,000 samples may take five minutes or minutes to detect because he needs a bunch of traffic to really confirm, whereas the actual edge device is seeing thousands of connections per second, so he can detect in sub-second. So it's faster, more accurate, more scalable, more automated, and this is the value that you'll see going forward more and more. Yes, in the industry, people were doing what whatever was possible, but there is a new paradigm that's emerging in terms of edge analytics, edge computing, because the number of devices connected to the internet is growing to be so large that, again, we will see a shift to the edge. So this is basically the same principle as putting your ACLs as close to the source as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think no, it really comes to down to the destination. You know, DDoS is, is a complicated topic, topic because really, in general, there's two types of attacks. There's volumetric or resource exhaustion. And application. Right, which and resource exhaustion is really just a subset of volumetric. But um, and and what, what Jordan's saying, you know, when you're looking at um, you know a bandwidth uh, a volumetric attack, you want that detection as closest to the edge as possible, right? Because you don't because yeah, it may be directed at a web service, but it could just as uh, easily be directed at my web, my uh, sure. my internet proxy. Who cares? It doesn't matter what the target is. But I need to be able to detect. I need need to be able to detect um, any attack against my entire landscape. Sure. But what you've indicated, and which is also accurate, is we also need to look at the resource exhaustion, where the target is just an application, and I can remediate. And and most likely those types of attacks you can remediate on prem. And so you need kind of both. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we are not saying exclusively. We are saying there is a new thing which is complementing. The, yeah. the old never goes. The new just gets added onto it. Sure, and I get the, I get the idea that the logic of, of your ADCs does add value as compared, to, as compared to using a flow-based tool. Like there's no question in my mind about that. But I feel like we're positioning at the ADC because that's just where it's at, not because that's the right place to put it. I, yeah. feel, I feel like the logic of the ADC, but higher up in the chain, would be the right place for this. Yeah, sure, oh, sure. So and here's the good news. Yeah. We do support both. The first version was flow-based. We are presenting this as an advancement over that. So uh, what you'll see in the demo to make all parties happy is that the centralized management system, <laughs> so there's no need to debate on this. We let the user decide. Uh, right. uh, the, the centralized management system is benefits from distributed detection. Mm -hmm. And whether it's the detector is sitting at the edge or closer to the app, it doesn't matter. And th that will be evident from the demo. Okay. Uh, uh, though in the demo there's only one detector, that because we are presenting the new stuff. Yeah. And the other stuff is already shipping, so we didn't need to present that right now. Okay. So, uh, with that, I think it's, I have 10 seconds now, reduced from one <laughs> minute. <laughs> uh, so this is the eGalaxy centralized management system. So it's really doing uh, uh, the orchestration of DDoS protection through two uh, things. It's managing, uh, monitoring all the resources through the distributed detectors, and it diverts traffic to the mitigator when it detects an attack. Also bear in mind, before, uh, we do have an, uh, deployments where the mitigator is always in line, but this is the case where we can share the mitigation resource on demand only for the service that is currently under attack.
So this is uh, uh, showing there are, yeah, actually there are two detectors in this uh, setup. Um, one uh, mitigator. And uh, the detection piece that is running in the ADC is the same function that we have running in all our data path de devices. It could be the CGN or the firewall and so on. So, You'll see the term z zone in this, and uh, let me take a quick moment to uh, talk about that. Zone is just the term for our protected object. That's, that captures the one or more protected endpoints, uh, the application endpoints. It's the term uh, for the protected object as configured in the mitigator. So it's, uh, the workflow shows how we automate the discovery of services from the various endpoints. And, and when a particular service is under attack, we create the zone in the mitigator, divert traffic towards it, and uh, scrub the traffic. Automation is great, uh, but uh, what is better is if we have better controls over the, uh, the automation. The operator, whether it's a service provider or enterprise, may have different policies and requirements. So we have uh, 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 policies at every stage which allows uh, for the operator to tell, given a set of IP address or services, which mitigation resource to use for the mitigate, mitigating in the case of a DDoS attack, and also what is the default countermeasure to use. And what you will see in the demo is, in addition to the default countermeasure, there is machine learning involved, which will uh, dynamically learn the attack signature uh, uh, the, uh, and, and, and uh, mitigate, and the countermeasure is applied as a BPF. Uh, and I will show that. I hope that's visible. So we're starting uh, clean traffic um, uh, directed, uh, which is passing through the ADC. And the detector on the ADC will learn about that service and notify a galaxy. And there's another benefit to this approach. Uh, Raj already mentioned there might be thousands of apps that uh, may be running, and we care about a subset of them. Uh, this also, there are multiple benefits. Uh, one is that we automatically detect, and so there's less of a need for interaction between the app admin and the security admin. As and when the applications are added and removed, the detection entity will automatically detect that and notify a galaxy. Uh, and also, you could discover about services that you didn't know were existing, so that's the other benefit. What's your starting point? You, you were talking about si uh, signature-based. Um, are you uh, drawing from a cloud-based uh, list of signatures? No, or, uh... I'll, I'll explain. So um, we, our starting point is just simple rate limit. Just, that's, as a, that's the default safety net, right? Um, the service can handle only so much traffic. Uh, and as uh, an attack is detected and the mitigator starts to scrub that, it also uh, analyzes the packets and uh, uh, extracts the signature out of that. And that would be the add-on uh, uh, countermeasure that is applied runtime. And uh, we also have, that's the AIOS where we have, uh, because he has botnets and other things that he's capturing uh, threat intel uh, on, in the cloud that is synced up with a Galaxy. But uh, that part is not the focus of this demo. Okay. I have a quick question. Sure. Well, maybe more bring up discussion. Um, I've worked with similar products like this, did some con consulting on guard and mitigation. And the trend lately has been to use a cloud-based service, depend on the ISP with sure. their SLAs. Um, what is everyone else seeing? Are we, I mean, I can see like for very large e-commerce businesses, obviously something on-prem. What's everyone else seeing? It, it has to be hierarchical. You need, you need a scrubbing center because you're never gonna protect against a volumetric attack on-prem, unless you're Google. Um, but it doesn't make sense to reroute your entire network to the cloud just because you have one web server under attack with 100 megabits of traffic. So you also want to be able to remediate on-prem for those types of attacks. And that's where, that's where you really have to have this hybrid approach to have you know, the ability to that insurance policy of, I have a massive attack, I'm gonna remediate in the cloud, but for my everyday 
low level attack. If somebody I can hits do you it, with a hundred meters of application attack, that can still take your servers down. And sending that out to an ISP DDoS engine won't repair. So you need to have something that sits in front of your web service so that you can take local action for low volume. But still a denial of service because they can take down your servers pretty easily, right? right. Yeah. Yep. yep. But if you're yeah, getting hit not, with a if I'm you're getting hit with a hundred gigabits of, of volume, then yes, you need an upstream. So you need choices. Right. Most people rely on flow detection. Mm -hmm. So what we're at, a second aspect here is flow. Most people use flows, export those to a DDoS provider, and then the DDoS provider divides when to activate. Yeah. Zero control, very poor granularity. They might react when nothing's happening. They might take 15 minutes to 30 minutes to detect an attack because the granularity is so poor. So again, you might want finer control. So if you are an e-commerce business and you're running stuff in the cloud or on, whether it's on or off-prem cloud, doesn't matter. You may need to actually decide much closer, much closer. As Carl points out, you might have a thousand web servers across 20 services and you only want to do DDoS, or not a DDoS, but a DOS protection at a group of servers or a single service out of a group. Like for example, gaming companies often present APIs and the APIs are often attacked but the main website is not. So the main website can be up, but their APIs can be under threat. So you might need to activate denial of service just for a the API point that you want to protect. So it's much more sophisticated than you might know unless you're in that business. Well, well put, actually. That, that's, <laughs> that's exactly very, that's, the case. You've spoken to, a little bit to a roadmap too, so. <laughs> <laughs> very eloquently put. So, but, so, but again, I think, so the value, I think, we're, I think me, we're conflating two things, that. though. I think we're conflating placement and logic. Yeah. Because I agree, agree with you. Logic-wise, we need that granularity. And I think that that's what we get out of this product. It's fantastic. Like, well, also, what you get out of this product is one product for DDoS. Same product for load balancing, application delivery controllers, security scanning, SSL interception. Rather than eight middle boxes, I have Rather than a set one, of middle boxes defend, that all coordinate. Models. Yes, yeah. that's a yeah. great thing. I and think that's where I really see the value, mm -hmm. is right there. So to continue, uh, at this point, a zone has been auto-created locally in eGalaxy after it learned about the service. It's an idle state. It has not been pushed to a mitigation group yet. There's no attack. And uh, that's where the policy comes in. It could be to an on, that can be naturally extended to an on-prem or an in-cloud mitigation device. And uh, I'll s add the attack traffic now uh, to the DNS service. Again, we get this notification. This. Uh, this attack detected is from the machine learning anomaly detection that's happening in the detector. This, uh, uh, this pop-up is from the notification received from the ADC detector. And an incident is created in response. The incident is <coughs> basically like a trouble ticket to track the, uh, the, the DDoS attack. So this is, right now there's an ongoing incident. It is suspecting a UDP flood. Uh, so this is our operational console, the DDoS operator would use. Uh, what you see in, um, uh, in, in the red is the drop traffic, the, and, and the green is the, the traffic that is passed through. Uh, so the default countermeasures are, all, are, are already applied, and uh, the operator, if he so chooses, can continue to um, uh, add additional security measures. Now, at some point, it starts analyzing the, uh, the packets that are coming in. This 10.6.133 is once again the mitigator. And this is information from the mitigator that uh, I have started the uh, signature extraction. And after Analyzing the packets, we have uh, come up with, this is the BPF that we need to uh, uh, apply to, to very surgically mitigate the truly uh, attacking packets. Actually, this um, traffic that we have used for attack is from a real attack scenario that had happened, uh, but um, we have anonymized some of the details to uh, While the attack is happening, we also have this uh, tool for packet capture, uh, which goes out and talks to the, uh, the mitigator and, and, and the mitigator ships the PCAPs to us. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Oh. So it, it also tells um, the drop reason. So 
So there's information about the, uh, uh, about the packets. The red indicate the dropped packets. And the, and the green uh, ones are the, the packets that have been uh, let to go through. I'll take a sneak peek at uh, uh, a few of the packets. The ones that are being dropped that you see here, the, there is an example that netted the, uh, this is the header that's being displayed. Um, and that was the, the attack that we had crafted. The green one is the, is the normal, uh, regular DNS traffic. <coughs> Is this integrated back into the Harmony portal as well? So like if I wanted, if I was looking for a session um, to a server that maybe was inadvertently getting caught in a filter, would I be able to see that um, similar to the other session? So at this moment, the shipping is, there are two separate consoles. Okay. But that is in the very near term, that would be in the, in the same plane. And, and to speak to Raj's point that the Harmony has been designed as one where the apps can be dynamically added. Mm -hmm. So this would be uh, another app that we are in the process of integrating. Right. So the attack is being stopped at this point, And uh, we give a few minutes of uh, quiet time to confirm that the attack has indeed stopped. I won't run the video for a few minutes, though. <laughs> 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 This is while the quiet period is going on. You'll see, if I were to do the packet capture, you'll see that uh, um, a majority of those are all green packets, indicating that these are clean packets. Sorry? Wait, is the incident report next? Uh, yes, I think that's the end of that. Um, so we're waiting for uh, the detector and the mitigator uh, to notify that the attack uh, has indeed de-escalated. De uh, uh, in this demo, we have only one detector and mitigator, but this works across n of those. And we'll uh, make sure that all of them are telling us that the attack has indeed um, de-escalated. So you, you so. block the attack, so is, is what you're saying, what, what's happening now is making sure that that guy realized that this is pointless and has moved on? Yes. So you yes. can actually remove that rule yes. back out? Yes. Okay. How do you do that? I mean, if you've got an attack that's on, you know, I guess you would you can, you can would continue to see that, and then as it trends down, then you would Yeah, the mitigator it. Tracks, uh, tracks the information. So it's the mitigator itself that Arvind showed uh, reporting back that says, you know, there's no longer an issue. De-escalate and move the service back. Yeah. Uh, Steer the service back toward its, its proper path. Oh, great. So this is the last few seconds. So we also automatically generate a report. Um, that's one of the things uh, every service provider or needs with respect to DDoS. So it has information about this uh, attack statistics as well as the oper actions that were taken um, and even uh, geolocation information. Any hooks in the like service now to open incident uh, tracking? So, uh, so not yet, but it's all. All our all our products have the REST API for all the functions, so it's very easy to 